servant leadership in the Bible. Jesus was a servant leader. Jesus is our example of the proven power of servant leadership in the Bible. Servant leadership in the Bible was established from the beginning. It was established as a principle for everyone to follow. From the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 15, verse 11, it says, There will always be poor people in the land. Therefore, I command you to be open-handed towards your fellow Israelites who are poor and needy in your land. Servant leadership is reaching out to others. Servant leadership, it means giving to others in need is servanthood. Mahatma Gandhi said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. Servant leadership is living your life for the sake of others. At Art Parker said, you serve by leading and you lead by serving. Serve to lead. Lead in an attitude of serving and serve in an attitude of leadership. The proven power of servant leadership in the Bible starts with humility. Lead with humility. Servant leadership is characterized by the desire to see others succeed while engaging in self-sacrifice to make that happy. Someone else's success should be nothing but your motivation. You may lead in one area of your life and be the follower in the other, and yet have the attitude of a servant in every area. You serve by leading, and you lead by serving. Lead, love, and serve like Jesus. Lead in an attitude of serving and serve in an attitude of leadership. Jesus led to serve someone greater than himself and Jesus led to serve us and his Father. What is servant leadership? Welcome to Worship TVPH and today we will talk about what is servant leadership? How is Jesus Christ the ultimate example of servant leadership? Servant leadership is best defined by Jesus himself. Whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant, and whoever wants to be first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many, Matthew chapter 20 verses 26 to 28. In the Christian realm, all leadership should be servant leadership. A common misconception among those who want to exercise a leadership role over others is that it comes with glory, power, and positions of honor. In fact, such a mistaken belief was the occasion for Jesus' words in the above passage. James and John had just asked Jesus to place them at his side when he assumed his throne in the kingdom to come. The other disciples became indignant at the arrogance of their request, Mark chapter 10 verse 41. And, as an object lesson, Jesus modeled the true servant style of leadership. He, the Lord incarnate, bent down and washed their feet, teaching them the true measure of leading by first serving others, John chapter 13 verses 12 to 17. The word servant in Matthew chapter 20 verse 27 means, slave. Not every servant was a slave, but every slave was a servant. It is sad commentary in the church today that we have many celebrities but very few servants. There are many who want to exercise authority, Matthew chapter 20 verse 25, but few who want to take the towel and basin and wash feet. Paul reminds us that our attitude is to be like Christ's in that we consider others better than ourselves and do nothing out of vanity or selfishness. Rather, we look out for the interests of others, Philippians chapter 2 verses 3 to 4. In this sense, then, every Christian is a servant. The focal point of servant leadership within the church is, to
to prepare God's people for works of service, so that the body of Christ may be built up, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12. This means, with Christ being the head of the church, the entire church body is served in the act of providing leadership. It's not just the church leaders who become acutely aware of their place at the foot of the cross but all those within the body of Christ. We all mutually submit ourselves to Jesus just as he was in submission to the Father. From a biblical perspective, servant leadership frees the church of the abuse of power and coercion and promotes mutual respect and love for one another. A servant leader seeks to invest himself in the lives of his people so that, as a whole, the church community is challenged to grow to be more like Christ. This is demonstrated in the leader's willingness to give of himself to meet the needs, but not necessarily the wants, of his people. Like a good parent, the true servant leader knows the difference between the needs of his spiritual children and their selfish wants and desires. The bottom line to the application of servant leadership is that we don't emulate the examples of the world. Our example is Jesus, who came as a servant. Therefore, our mission is to serve one another, to give of ourselves. Christ came to give his life. We are to give of our lives not only in service to him but to our fellow man, including those in the church and outside it, Mark chapter 12 verse 31. The biblical definition of leadership what is the biblical definition of leadership? Here is a verse from the book of Deuteronomy giving instruction for anyone who was a king of Israel. Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 18 to 20. When he takes the oath of his, when he takes the throne of his kingdom, the king is to write for himself on a scroll, a copy of this law taken from that of the Levitical priest. When he sits on the throne as king, he must copy for himself this body of instruction on a scroll in the presence of the Levitical priest. It is to be with him, and he is to read it all the days of his life so that he may learn to revere the Lord his God. It shall be with him and he shall read it all the days of his life, that he may learn to fear the Lord his God by carefully observing all the words of his law and these, and these statutes. And follow carefully all the words of this law and this decrees, and not consider himself better than his fellow Israelites and turn from the law to the right or to the left. Then he and his descendants will reign a long time over his kingdom in Israel. Jesus defined true leadership for us. The biblical foundation of a servant leader, as Jesus said, the greatest among you will be your servant. Matthew chapter 23 verse 11. The greatest among you shall be your servant. And Jesus called them together and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant. Not so with you. Whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be the first must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 20, verse 25 to 28. For even the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Jesus was addressing servanthood. First, Jesus appointed some to be leaders in establishing his body here on earth, the church. He, Jesus addressed attitude. Then, Jesus assigned leadership. Jesus established his own status 
as a servant. A servant who would lead by giving his life as a ransom for many. He gave his life as a ransom for many. Can we go to the examples of leaders in the Bible? There are many famous leaders in the Bible. You can see in the Old Testament, there were Moses, Aaron, Jacob, David, the kings, Nehemiah, Ruth, and Deborah. These are leaders in the Old Testament learning, and we can learn a lot from the Old Testament leaders. But in the New Testament, we have also leaders like John the Baptist, the disciples, Paul, Timothy, John, Peter, James, Mary Magdalene, and Jesus' mother, Mary. There are great figures and leaders of the New Testament. And these leaders in the Bible live and die as servants of God and His people. Moses never entered the promised land, but Moses gave his life to lead the children of Israel out of captivity. Joseph was persecuted by his own family. We know the story how Joseph was sold. Joseph became a servant leader to the ungodly king. Nehemiah left his position of service to a Persian king to go serve the nation of Israel by leading in rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem and establishing order. Almost all of the disciples were martyred, but they spent their lives serving the church and the people. Service. Why Jesus? A lot of us know the name and popularity of Jesus. The stories, the miracles, and the personality of Jesus. We come across statues, architecture, fashion, and art that exalt his name. No one has had greater influence in history. This man, this one man who lived on earth 2,000 years ago, has shaped and transformed so many. But is his word relevant to leaders today? Can the way he led help us lead others? Timeless truths, more than a gifted teacher whose wisdom enlightened minds, whose way of influencing and loving others redefined the very essence of leadership, offering a model for true strength and purpose. Why Jesus, you ask? Here's an answer to this simple question. The leadership of Jesus is radically different from any other model of leadership known to man. No other leader has compelled people to join such a cause. The planned effect being to redeem, to restore our broken world. Assembling a flawed group of men, he set a standard for building teams. The men he invested in and empowered eventually laid down their lives for his cause. Why Jesus? Knowing that his time on earth was short, he strategized a plan that would allow his vision for this world to carry on through his faithful followers. No other leader has led such a movement throughout the ages. Why Jesus? Because Jesus remained innocent with his divine power in the face of temptation when the enemy tested him. Why Jesus? Because where others have fallen to selfishness, greed, or gratification, Jesus didn't falter. When have the powerful bowed down their knees to serve their followers? What king, emperor, or president flipped their kingdom upside down just to help those who should help them? Why Jesus? Because this was no ordinary man. He is the standard, the model for all our challenges and problems. And the more we lead with his spirit, the more we hear it and allow ourselves to be transformed by it. By His power and authority, we can lead like Jesus. Jesus' leadership model. Jesus became a servant leader. Jesus was a servant leader who did not seek fame. He did not seek fortune. Jesus did not seek worship or followers. Jesus came 
to do what the Father had directed him to do. And Jesus served the people by teaching them the truth. Jesus led them into a new way of life. Jesus set them free from bondage. Jesus sacrificed himself for them and for us. Jesus' leadership model was to be an example. The leadership style of Jesus. For Jesus, leadership means to be humble. A servant leader means, like for Jesus, Jesus keep his focus on his calling. A model to example, Jesus put others ahead of himself and Jesus lived what he thought. And Jesus lived what he thought to bring salvation to all who would come. Salvation. This is the word of the cross. Let's go to these characteristics of Jesus' leadership. First, Jesus came to serve the Father. Jesus came into the world to serve His Father and all of mankind. John 6 verse 38, For I have come down from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of the one who sent me. I have come from heaven not to do my will, but to do the will of the one of him who sent me. Second, Jesus' servant leadership. Jesus had an unwavering focus on fulfilling his calling. His mission, it says, going a little farther, he fell with his face on the ground and prayed, My Father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken away from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. This is Jesus' unwavering focus on fulfilling his calling. Jesus, doing the will of his Father, not what I will, but let your will be done. The third example of Jesus' leadership, Jesus was humble. Washing the feet of the disciples, Mark chapter 9, verse 35, sitting down, Jesus called the twelve and said, Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and servant of all. Anyone who wants to be the first must be the very last and the servant of all. Fourth characteristics of Jesus' servant leadership. Jesus was the wisdom of God. Jesus Christ, the wisdom of God. The first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 24. But to those whom God has called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, Christ, the wisdom of God. Christ, the wisdom of God. Fifth, Jesus knew the word. Jesus knew the scriptures. He knew God's word. Then beginning with Moses and with the prophets, Jesus explained to them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. This is in the Gospel of St. Luke, verse 24 to 27, how he knew the Word of God. He knows the sacred scriptures. He knows his Bible. Beginning with Moses and with the prophets, Jesus explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Jesus, the fulfillment of all what that is written in the Old Testament. Six characteristics of Jesus' leadership. Servant leadership. Jesus lived what he spoke. John chapter 14, verse 28 to 31. You have heard me say, I'm going away and I'm coming back to you. If you love me, you would be glad that I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. The Father is greater than I. I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. And now I have told you, when it will come to pass, 
you might believe. I will not say much more to you, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me. But he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what the Father has commanded me. Come now, let us live. I do only as the Father commands. The seven characteristics of Jesus' servant leadership, Jesus became the servant of all. A servant of all. This is what we are called to be, like Jesus, to be a servant to all. The letter to the Philippians, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8, in your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, Jesus Christ, who being in the very nature of God, he did not consider himself equality with God, something to be used to be grabs up in his own advantage. Rather, Jesus, who being in the very nature of God, who being in the form of God, being in the very nature of God, Jesus did not consider himself equal with God. And this is the example of Jesus. Although he existed in the form of God, even he did not regard equality with God something to be grabs up. Rather, he emptied himself, nothing by taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. Christ emptied himself, taking the form of a bond servant. And being found in appearance as a man, Jesus humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even to death on a cross. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Obedient to the point of death. The eight characteristics of Jesus' servant leadership. Jesus was willing to, to sacrifice his life for others. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 3, verse 18, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but may have eternal life. The nine characteristics of Jesus' servant leadership, Jesus was truth. He spoke the truth. And Jesus what? was not afraid to speak the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. This is the Gospel of St. John, chapter 14, verse 6. And Jesus is our way. Jesus is our truth. This is our life. The ten characteristics of Jesus' servant leadership. Jesus had unfailing, unfailing love for mankind. May your unfailing love, O Lord, rest upon us, even as we put our hope in you. John 17, verse 22, I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, and I in them, and you in me. The glory which you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one just as we are one, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me, and that I have loved them, that you know that you sent me and have loved them, even as you have loved me. This is the power of unity. The power of love.
Bible verses about servant leadership. There are greatest Bible ber verses that tells us about servant leadership. Let's begin with the letter to the Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 7. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Imitate their faith. Matthew chapter 23, verse 8. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have only one teacher, and you are all brothers. Do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father, and he is in heaven. Matthew chapter 23, verse 10. Nor are you to be called instructor, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. Matthew chapter 23, verse 11. The greatest among you will be your servant. Matthew 23, verse 12. But to those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Humility. Jesus was addressing a principle of humility. And Jesus was addressing an attitude of servanthood to his disciples. The attitude of a servant. The letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 1, verse 1. Paul, servant of Christ Jesus, called to be an apostle, set apart for the gospel of God. Paul, a servant of Christ, called to be an apostle. The second letter of Timothy, chapter 4, verse 24, And the Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but must, bath, must be kind to everyone, able to teach and not resentful. The servant of the Lord must not strive, but must be gentle unto all men, up to teach and patient. Opponents must be gently instructed in the hope that God will grant them repentance, leading them to a knowledge of truth. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading them to the knowledge of truth. And they will come to their senses, escape from the trap of the devil, who has taken them captive to do his will. Summarizing this letter, second letter of Timothy, it says, the Lord's servants has four characteristics. First, not quarrelsome. Second, kind to all. Third, able to teach. And fourth, patient when wrong. Philippians chapter 1, verse 1. Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus, to all of God's holy temple in Christ at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons, Paul and Timothy, Ban servants of Christ Jesus. The New Testament leaders had titles, and the New Testament leaders were definitely looked upon by the people as their leaders. They are great figures of the New Testament. The New Testament leaders were committed servants. First of all, they're committed servants of God. Then they became committed servants for mankind. The apostles. That's why the New Testament leaders gave instruction. The New Testament leaders, they thought, they baptized, they prayed, they sacrificed. They when they were tortured, these New Testament leaders were tortured, they continued to share the good news and they continued to build churches which survives today. These are the figures of the New Testament the Word of God, the Scriptures, the Bible, talks about leadership qualities and servanthood. The Word of God. There are powerful qualities of a servant leadership in the Bible. And among those qualities, there are two qualities of servant leadership which are foremost. Number one, devotion to Jesus. Number two, humility. Some of the other qualities are and I quote, it's from the sacred scriptures, 
first letter to Timothy, chapter 4, verse 12, Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in impurity. Second, Timothy verse 2, verse 15, Do your best to present yourself to God as one approved. Study to show thyself approved unto God. And a worker who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly hand, handles the word of truth, rightly dividing the word of truth. You call me teacher and Lord. That is the Gospel of St. John, chapter 13, verse 13. You call me teacher and Lord, and rightly so, for that is what I am. You call me teacher and Lord. But now I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your faith. You also should wash another's faith. This is servant leadership, washing the feet of its other in the spirit of service. If I, your Lord, have washed your feet, you ought also to wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you. This is Jesus' example of servant leadership. Jesus said, For I gave you an example that you also should do as I did to you. Truly, I tell you, this Gospel of St. John chapter 13, verse 16, No servant is greater than his master, and nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. Now that you know these things, you'll be blessed if you, de if you, if you do, do them. Philippians chapter 2, verse 3, do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility value, in humility value others above yourself. Others first. Humble yourself. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility value others above yourself. Not looking to your own interest, but to each one of you must look to the interests of the others. Learn to help each other. Don't look out only for your own interest, but take interest in others too. Why lead like Jesus? This model works. Meet John. He knows his leadership skills are important. He reads all the books, attends the workshops, and changes his management tactics accordingly. Yet it still doesn't seem to be working. The trouble is, John is so focused on trying to implement new tactics that he's neglecting one basic problem, himself. As it turns out, John is not alone. According to a recent survey, 38% of chief executives fail in the first 18 months. And it's mainly due to ego pride, and lack of emotional intelligence. And where leaders fail, problems follow. The truth is that effective leadership begins with character and the heart, rather than tactics alone. Inspired and empowered by the greatest leader of all time, Jesus, we've created a unique approach that focuses on developing better leaders, not just better habits. On this journey, you'll discover how to lead through love, and develop into a respected leader, no matter who or where you influence. And we'll provide the resources needed to help you apply the principles in your day-to-day -day living. Can you imagine how the world would look like if more of us started leading like Jesus? Learn more and begin the journey. We have 10 powerful qualities of a servant leader in the Bible. Ten powerful qualities of a servant leadership in the Bible. If we look to Jesus as our model for the proven power of servant leadership, we see multiple qualities of servant leadership in Jesus. The servant leadership style of Jesus. Jesus is our example 
of ultimate servant leadership. Lead like Jesus. Number one, love and devote yourself to the Father. This is Jesus' example, his love for the Father. Secondly, unwavering focus on fulfilling his mission, his vocation, his calling. This is Jesus. Vocation, Jesus' mission was revealed at this baptism. My beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Third example of Jesus' observant leadership is humility. Lead and serve with humility. Fourth, Jesus' example of being servant leadership is characterized by wisdom. The wisdom of God. The wisdom of Jesus. Fifth, the leadership of Jesus is characterized by his knowledge of the Word of God. Familiarity with God's Word, the Scriptures, and that faith power that comes from the knowledge of the Word of God. Six, Jesus' servant leadership as a servant. Jesus was never a hypocrite, meaning Jesus lived what he spoke, living what he preached, putting into action what he said. And this is Jesus. Seven, if we try to see Jesus' servant leadership, we can see only that Jesus became the servant of all. The servant of all. He served all. Eight, Jesus' servant leadership is characterized by his willingness to sacrifice his life for the others. No greater love than this than to lay down your life for your friends. Nine, Jesus' example of servant leadership, we can say, is filled with truth and willing to speak the truth, but nothing but the truth. And this is Jesus, our way, our truth, and the life. Jesus is truth. And the, this is mentioned 70 times in the gospel, I tell you the truth. Jesus kept repeating. And lastly, Jesus' characteristic of servant leadership is his unfailing love for mankind. His love for all. That's why we are called to love everybody. Love like Jesus. It is the goal of a selfish love. These are the qualities of a servant leader and of a servant leadership in the Bible. We can all see it in Jesus. We have seen the powerful qualities of servant leadership in the Bible <coughs> and everyone can have these qualities if they want them. Lead like Jesus. When Jesus gave his new commandment, it summed up everything. I give you a new commandment. As I have loved you, love one another. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 13, verse 34. So I give you a new command. Love each other deeply and fully. Remember the ways that I have loved you. The, remember the ways that I demonstrate your love for others in those same way. And demonstrate your love for others in the same way as Christ has loved us. Love one another as I have loved you. Be a servant leader. Follow Jesus' servant leadership. Servant leadership. Jesus said, Here I am among you as one who serves a servant of all. That's why leading Jesus' way, servant leadership, whoever wants to be great among you must be your servant. And whoever wants to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, 
but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Serve like Jesus. Lead like Jesus. Lead like Jesus. Serve like Jesus. Lead like Jesus. We end with the song, Amare, Servire, to love and serve the Lord in everything.